Hi, I'm Mara Van Fleet, and I'm here today to read you um, a little excerpt from The Lorax. Okay. Um, Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swami swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, and all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk as they had the sweet smell of fresh buttery milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I'd unload my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down the truffle tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a deed. <laughs> the instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharp and was bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. A need to find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool bead. But the very next, next minute I proved he was wrong, for just at that minute a chap came along, and he thought that the bead I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax, you poor stupid guy. You'll never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him, shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, I built a radio phone, I put in a quick call. I called on my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunstler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to the north niche. Turn left at Weehawk and sharp right at South Stitch. This is a really fun book. And what I like about books is that they can take you to places that you'd never be able to go in the real world, like where the Lorax lives.